P-A-E-C-T pod. I am the, or actually co-host, Dom Salvucci, Southwest Regional Director of P-A-E-C-T. However, the main host, Mr. Eric Verno, is not here today. Um, he is meeting on the West Coast via Zoom, I believe, doing a training out there for some people. So I just wanted to say hi. We're doing a little bit of a cold open here instead of our usual um, opening, which is this. We have two special guests, which I will get into after our openings. So. Welcome to the PAECT Pod, Season 1, Episode, I want to say 10, but I didn't have it written down. Um, this is a special episode because we're going into wrapping up May and getting, actually wrapping up April, getting ahead of myself, heading into May, and uh, we're getting into a special time of year. Teachers are winding down, everyone's getting ready for summer if the weather ever cooperates, and, and it used to be in western Pennsylvania, but now it is spreading. It is getting time to be Remake Learning Days, and we have two special guests to work with Remake Learning Days. Our first special guest is Kelsey Wilcox Boyles, our own PAACT <laughs> member, and our second guest, Yuling Chen from Remake Learning Days. Welcome, ladies. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Dom. Thanks for the invite. Oh, thank you guys for coming on. Um, we're going to talk with both of you um, about PACT, Remake Learning Days, and events that we are working on together throughout the state. And actually, um, not to ruin the surprise, but to, spoiler alert, if you don't want to hear it, cover your ears. Yuling, Remake Learning Days has expanded beyond Western Pennsylvania, correct? Yes, so it started in 2016. It started in the Pittsburgh region. Um, it honestly was an experiment the first year we did it. We thought, you know, could we do a joyful celebration of learning? And at the time, people were like, what's a celebration of learning? And so for us, that meant to have a festival where all the people we were working with, after school educators, in school educators, roboticists, artists, teaching artists, um, people who were working in small businesses that were doing amazing learning activities with kids to bring them together and have a festival where they basically open their doors. So the first year we actually called it the world's largest open house of learning. And whether you went to a library or a park or a school, you could go to a learning activity. And that year we had hundreds of events and 25,000 kids and families show up. Um, so then that experiment became something that we did again the following year. And then in 2018, we did a bus tour. People wanted to come and see it. So people came in from all over the US. Um, and so in 2019, it became Remake Learning Days Across America, um, which is how now it's grown to 17 regions this year, um, starting tomorrow, April 22nd through May 23rd. And every region picks their own dates. And that's how we met Kelsey. And um, we are so excited that Northwest PA has come back to host the parents and caregivers as well. That is that is great. And it's, it's cool that it's expanding and being um, a positive influence as it is. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to throw a couple questions at Kelsey. You think I'll give you a break for a second and let you go back to the green room. Although, you know, we're out of M&Ms. Sam's Club was out of M&Ms whenever I was there, so I can't give you any treats, but let you kick back and relax for a second. And we'll talk with Kelsey. Then I'll bring you back in here in a few minutes. Kelsey, how are you tonight? Hey, Dom. I'm doing great. I'm actually uh, double duty tonight. I'm up in Edinburgh, PA at our uh, Northwest PAECT Extra Mile Award Dinner. So that's happening in the room beside me. And then you also asked me to do a PAECT podcast on the same night. So here I am. I'm glad you could make, glad you could make both. I was only able to make one. I was hoping to try and make the Extra Mile Award Dinner because it's not too, too far from mm -hmm. where I'm at. So Kelsey. Um, would you like to explain your role in PAECT for everyone who doesn't know? 
Sure, yeah. Uh, I am the Northwest PAECT Assistant Regional Director, and I also volunteer on our statewide board as our IU um, Intermediate Unit Liaison to the PAECT board, and then also the liaison from PAECT to, to the IU group as well. That's great. We're so glad to have you on board. And I'm sure the IU, I know with, you've given me a lot of resources from your IU, even though we're in a different region, a lot of great resources. I'm sure they appreciate you um, working with them too. How long have you been a member of PAECT? Ballpark. Yeah, that's a great question. I'm thinking <laughs> probably about seven or eight years. And I started when I started my role at the intermediate unit. But if I would have known about PACT sooner, I would have been a member for longer. So happy to be here for the time that I was or that I am and um, just sharing resources and uh, connecting teachers, educators with others across our Northwest region and across the state. We're glad to have you on board. Um, and I did take your tip on the pancake robots. I'm going to pick them up shortly. Uh, looking forward to that. The kids at school are getting excited. Like, are you going to bring them in? Show them a picture. Um, well, they they still have them. IU One still has <laughs> fifty dollar pancake bots, so I can hook you guys up. Anyone that's out there that needs a pancake bot, still let me know. <laughs> about an email to the show, uh, pod at paect org is the email address. We will get information to you. <laughs> um, you're also involved with Remake Learning. Would you like to explain how you're involved with Remake Learning? I absolutely love Remake Learning Days. I love what they stand for. And yes, I am part of that as uh, the lead for Northwest PA Remake Learning Days. And uh, part of my role at the intermediate unit, I'm our, our STEM point of contact. And the Department of Ed actually gives us um, a list of initiatives each year. And for the past few years, um, on that list has been STEM, um, you know, joyful learning, hands-on learning, and to really lift up and connect and build our, our local STEM ecosystem, whether it's an informal STEM ecosystem or a formalized uh, STEM ecosystem. And so that gives me some, some time really built into my day job um, to connect the community partners that are doing great things for kids, whether it's during the school day or um, out of school time. And so when I first saw the momentum happening in Pittsburgh with the Remake Learning Network and with Remake Learning Days specifically, um, I heard they were expanding and they became Remake Learning Days across America. I wanted to latch on to that. You know, we had such great pockets of, of innovation happening in our local libraries and our local um, historical museums like Drake Well Museum in Titusville with um, some oil and gas pieces and wanted to to highlight them and, and give them that platform. So we, we joined Remake Learning Days Northwest PA. Um, last year was our first year and we are back for a second year, actually have doubled the events in our region from year one to year two. And we're really excited for May May 12th to get here. Actually, we have some pre-festivals um, events happening. So we really start um, April 30th and then May 5th, and then there's a little bit of a lull, and May 12th through the 23rd, we'll have 121 Northwest PA events on that event calendar. That's fantastic, and it's grown quickly and successfully. That's that's fantastic. Um, now, I heard something about, in fact, we were talking last night um, at our PACT book study, which also ties into Remake Learning. Um, we'll get into that later. But there was something about um, the Career Ready PA Backpack Challenge, and that also is tied in with the PA Department of Education. It is. Yeah, I'd love to talk about that real quick and uh, put a little plug in there because the registration is still open for that Career Ready PA Backpack Challenge. Um, the Department of Ed saw us last year, saw some really great connections and you know, looked at all these events that were happening and said, wow, Every, just about every event on that calendar aligns with our career um, standards, our K through 12 Department of Ed standards that students or that teachers are asked to align their lessons to. You know, can we marry these two? So they connected with Yuling um, and Dory from Remake Learning Days and said, how can we partner and make a, you know, a campaign or a challenge out of it using your amazing 
community partners and event hosts that are already on the calendar. So they did a very successful campaign last year and um, have opened it up again this year. Um, so schools first do need to register to be part of that Career Ready Backpack Challenge. And once they register, they'll get some marketing materials and um, share it with teachers and say, hey, teachers, if you see an event happening virtually or on demand and you want to include it in, you know, during the school day with your kids, uh, go ahead and um, engage your students in a Remake Learning Day event. And then here's a survey that the students will fill out after the event. And that counts as an artifact for the career portfolios that our schools across the state have to keep um, for the students of K through 12 career portfolios. And the other piece is, you know, schools can also share with families um, evening events and weekend events, virtual events. And if school, if students um, attend with their families, even out of school hours, they still have that survey that they can complete. And then that can also count as, as that artifact for their, their school portfolio. Well, that's a great opportunity. That is a fantastic opportunity. Um, and I'm glad you're sharing it with people because I just found out about it last night. So I'm going to share that with my district. And hopefully people watching this will share it with their districts at home. Um, how, I know you're doing another event too. Can you stay for a while, Kelsey? Cool. Yep. Well, I'm going to I'm gonna do this. I'm going to play the official POD uh, pod guest at POD. I used to teach. Uh, Principles of Democracy, or if you're a pessimist, Problems of Democracy, you always call it uh, POD instead of POD. I'm going to play the official POD guest intro and then bring in Yu Ling. Yu Ling, welcome again. Get you the official intro for you. I apologize to Kelsey because we I forgot to play the official intro whenever she came in, but you know, not used to working the, the technical the back end of the podcast while I'm also hosting. Um, you think it's you know, emailed a few times, it's great to meet you finally, uh, you know, over the over the internet. Um, so we already talked about how remake learning has grown. If you could give us a little bit of background on, on yourself and how you became involved with Remake Learning. Yeah, so I've been involved with Remake Learning since the launch of Remake Learning Days in 2016. Um, again, I, I thought it was a one-year experiment, so it was just kind of a, I'm here to help out, and here I am, you know, in 2022. So I serve as the co-producer for Remake Learning Days across America, and uh, my background is in marketing. Um, I really love community outreach. It's just something I'm passionate about and reaching families and communities and really bringing people together. Um, but I also just personally, I studied music and economics. I was a musician for a while. Um, I taught after school music classes, worked at the symphony. Um, so I've, I've done a variety of things in my life. What, what instrument did you play? I played violin. Oh, nice. <laughs> so that's one thing I, I love music i'm not the most talented at it i can um play to the level of annoying people <laughs> but it is something it is a skill it is a skill i wish i, I would have tried uh, more whenever i was younger that's that's great um so with the remake learning days you've said you know because it's become so popular went from a one-year trial experiment to you know we're what six years in uh, with this now. And it's grown from just around Pittsburgh, which, you know, I've heard about this a number of years ago, and I've gone to a couple events in the local area because, you know, grow, growing up around Pittsburgh and being able to you know, work in the area and, and living around here, I was able to hit a few events. But now that it's grown, um, you know, what do you see going on with this and, and how it's growing uh, in the continuation? Uh, of how the program's been, um, uh, I don't want to so, say burgeoning because it has been from Western Pennsylvania to across the nation. Yeah. So it, even that was a bit of a surprise for us when people came for the bus tour and then they said, you know, we want to start our own festival. Can you help us? So one of the things we did was we created a toolkit that is open, open to anyone. Anyone can use it. In fact, 
Christ Church in New Zealand used our toolkit to create their own festival. Um, and for us, it really comes down to four goals. There are four goals behind the festival. So one is to create learning opportunities for parents and guardians to learn alongside their kids. So part of the Remake Learning Network, um, you know, they bring together all these educators from different backgrounds together and they have these idea immersions and they exchange ideas, they create amazing project-based learning. But then we realized that we were missing an important group of people and those were the parents and primary guardians in the kids' lives. And so the festival gives that opportunity for parents to learn alongside them, to feel more confident in their skills, um, and to hopefully be a good partner then with the teacher in the school or the after-school educators, or maybe they're when their um, kids discover a new passion, and then they go sign up for an after-school camp. So that's one goal. And then the second is to celebrate learning. And I think a lot of times, um, when when we would do that on a local level, we sometimes forget like there are other cities and other people who are doing the exact same thing and there's power to doing it together, right? And you expand that knowledge base, you expand that celebration. Um, we also host it in the summertime to help avoid summer learning loss, or excuse me, in the springtime to help avoid summer learning loss. My my brain's already in summer, apparently. <laughs> okay, it's, it's supposed to get warm around here, so everyone's kind of getting antsy. Yeah, you know, I, 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 I'm glad it stopped snowing. I don't know about you, but we had snow <laughs> earlier in the week and I was a little like, oh. Yes. Um, but we specifically host the festival in April, May so that families can discover resources that are in their own backyards, right? And, and maybe they will discover something new that their child is interested in. And so that'll hopefully bring them closer to community resources that are offered over the summer. And so that kids continue learning, but having fun, right? Relevant learning, but having fun. Um, and then the last goal is to strengthen ecosystems. And so for us, any role that we can help in playing, um, in helping to strengthen ecosystems in any city, we, we are happy to do it. Um, because we know by doing that, it provides more opportunities for kids of all different backgrounds. That's that's good. I mean, those are great goals to have. I want to bring Kelsey back in because this, um, is it my wife's hair salon? I'm not putting a plug in for her, but was it her her salon today after work? And I was talking with one of the customers, and we were talking about, um, you know, school and such. But remake learning days. It's not just about the technology, correct? It's it encompasses technology, but it's also the process behind it, the thinking behind it. And a lot of people don't get that, that STEAM is not necessarily on the computer, always on the computer. It's a concept, not just computer-based. We're getting photobombed. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I would just add Remake Learning Days. There's a number of different learning themes that we use. So it's arts, it's maker, it's outdoor learning, science, technology, and youth voice. So tech is one of them, but it's not the only one. Um, it, that provides different learning channels. I don't know, Kelsey, if you want to add something to that. I do. I want to share uh, the outdoor learning theme where there's a lot of event hosts and not just conservation districts and state parks that are hosting events outside uh, this spring. And I'm sure that there's you know some COVID pieces there and it's keeping the distance and being out in, in an open space. But I'm loving these events that are like art in the park and um, some, some arts and some youth voice. Uh, one of my favorite events that I attended last year with my own family that is on the event calendar again this year is called Spring at the Springs. And it's a, a local park in you know, Emlinton, small town Emlinton, PA, and it's a local um, community art studio. And so they're hosting the event at, you know, at an outdoor place, but nature, outdoor learning, um, some crafts and some rock painting and just all kinds of hands-on learning in an, a unique outdoor space for families to enjoy. So that's what I love. You know, we have the, the themes, but that they can cross pollinate um, within, within those two. Yeah. And I'll just add, Tom, you mentioned your wife owns a hair salon, right? Yes. Yeah. So in Northeast PA, there is an event called the Art and Science of Hair Color. And it's oh, hosted neat. by the Da Vinci Science Center. And so students, this is for older students, grades 7 through 12, I believe, along with an adult, 
um, will work with cosmetologists and understand the science behind coloring your hair and how to perfect the different shades. And what does that mean? And answer questions about if you're interested in this as a career path, what does that mean? Um, and then actually you get to touch up your roots. And I mean, I was like, maybe I should go. I, I could use a little touch up. So I've been told I need to do yep. with this. <laughs> Yeah, uh, but it it's, you know, and this is a career ready PA event as well. And so, again, it goes back to if relevant, if the learning is relevant to the kids, they will be interested, right? And they will learn be, whether they know it or not. I mean, these kids that come to that event will learn the science of hair coloring. And that's good because I, I know like we have had, had done job shadowing for our senior, our kids before they graduate, they have to job shadow and, and follow so many different careers and such. And a lot of students go into the job shadowing without a lot of research and they'll come back and say, you know what, that isn't what I thought it was going to be. And if they don't do that soon enough, they may go into training, may start spending money on these things and realize, you know, I didn't realize I had to do X, Y, or Z. And uh, that, you know, makes me queasy. That's not what I, I'm happy with or, I wasn't expecting having to do that. So being able to do things like this, with the, the um, PA backpack challenge, that's a good way before they actually get into following a career path, start spending money on classes. What do they have to expect? And, you know, a lot of people don't realize the science behind some of the careers they get into. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll just add to what Kelsey shared about career ready PA. So there are, um, 375 events happening across the state of Pennsylvania in all six with all six festivals, and 186 of those events qualify for Career Ready PA. And there are events for young kids. There are events for older teens. Um, so I know a lot of times people are like, "Oh, this only applies to older kids as they're you know maybe exploring their paths post high school." But no, there are events for younger kids where um, they will learn a skill set or they'll get exposed to um, a type of career that maybe they just want to ask questions, like ask an architect about this. So how how do families find this information as to where the events are and where they're located, what times, and everything? Uh, so we have a great website. It is remakelearningdays.org. And when you go to that website, um, you can select which region you're interested in learning more about, or you can simply select the find events button. And when you do that, you can then, um, you'll see a map populate. Ooh, Kelsey, nope. this is so exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So you can see a map populate and um, and below it, you can see the events that are in date order. But um, if I can get you to scroll back up to the top, I'll just share that most people will um, put in their zip code and say, find an event near me, right? But you can also search by keyword, um, or you can say, I have these exact dates and this is all that I can do. And I wanna know what's happening on this particular day. Um, and so the map will then resort itself. Um, so Kelsey just did a search for 16214 of 25 miles, I believe. So it, it should resort. But what I was gonna say is we know from research and surveys that most parents search by learning theme. They know mostly that their kids are saying, hey, I'm interested in arts or I'm interested in doing something outside. And so you can search by those themes. You can search by age group. Um, we also have accessibility accommodations in there. So you can also search by that. Um, and the majority of events are free. So we do have a cost filter in there, but I will just say 98% of the events are free. And if there is a cost, it's generally a low cost. That's good to know because I didn't know that is, especially times like this, um, you know, Money is an issue for a lot of, of people. You know, travel is an issue, uh, getting gas in the vehicles to get going. Um, but that's great that, you know, most of the events are either free or low cost. Um, Dom, I do want to chime in real quick since we do sure. have that uh, screen share. The, <clears throat> the different kinds of events, too. So they're in-person events, virtual events, and then the on-demand tab as well. We'll show you, uh, you know, items that are available to, to stream um, online at any time. Just go in and click and grab that link and engage your family at home or your students during the classroom. 
in those virtual and on demand. So don't forget about those extra little tabs there when you do the in-person and virtual. And then right underneath, you can check mark if you want in-person or virtual to show up. And then there's also that additional tab of on demand as well. So the on demand, they are recorded events. Mm -hmm. And then the virtual will be a mix of possibly recorded and live or they're live virtual events. So a live at a particular event. time. Yeah. But whereas on demand is pre-recorded or it's something you can kind of do at your own pace when you want to do it. Um, but I'm glad Kelsey brought up virtual because I know we're here mostly talk about um, things happening in Pennsylvania. But with Remake Learning Days across America and some of the we have more than 100 virtual events you can start to visit other regions or kids can connect together in a way that they might not have been able to connect together because they don't live in the same city. So I'll give one example and then I'm going to call out Kelsey to give out an example that I know happened last year. Um, you know, this year, for example, you could go to the International Spy Museum in Washington, D.C., and you can work with a museum educator there um, virtually and learn all the skill sets that come with being a spy. And you can test out some of your skills do you, doing some of the challenges that they'll pose. So it's one of those things like I would never be able to do that here in Pittsburgh, right? I'm four hours away, but I can join in virtually. So that's one of the nice benefits of virtual. Um, but Cassie, I'm gonna turn it over to you because I know um, cousins, I believe, were able to join in together. Yes, you're right. I was thinking like, oh gosh, I love all these events. I've talked to Yuling a lot. So which one is she referring to? <laughs> yes, Joe Woes out of Pittsburgh. He does the Cartoon Academy show on the WQED PBS station. And he had a, a weekend virtual uh, tutorial of how to draw your cartoons. And my nephews from Erie, and then uh, my own, my I have two children, but the one that was four at the time was the old, the oldest one. Um, we connected together virtually in a Zoom room, and it was still when some of the COVID restrictions were were in place, and we hadn't been visiting them very long. So, um, so we got to to be do be together in a virtual setting for a remake learning day event and shared our our cartoon uh, artistry or lack thereof. But yeah, and he um, he's actually coming back, so. Um, just in a, a day or two, he'll get his event back up, up on the calendar for these this year with, with the new date. Very nice. That's great because I know that was, you know, there's still some hesitancy with some people getting together. Um, you know, a lot of people were itching to get back. Kristen Landers. Our PA, the, our PA state membership, chair. membership chair. Yes. <laughs> we have a lot of photo, photo bombs tonight. <laughs> Um, you know, with that, people were trying to get back together, but it, it is nice because there are, there's still some hesitancy and, you know, even with, um, you know, small groups versus crowds, this is an, a way people can still participate, which is good, good to know. Um, this is a little bit off of the remake learning days, but just remake learning in general. I know that you guys offer a lot of opportunities to, for educators and others to improve education, improve learning opportunities. I don't know if that would be another show, if you'd like to talk about, a little bit about that um, tonight. But I know Remake Learning does a lot of good events. Um, I don't want to say it does a lot of good events, that doesn't make sense, but sponsors a lot of good initiatives and helps out. Um, the, you know, the process behind, the purpose behind is to improve learning opportunities and improve quality of life. Yes. So I can share a little bit about Remake Learning, but I, I'm sure they would be happy to come back for another show. Um, Remake Learning as a network, it began in 2007. It began in a very informal way um, where people started meeting each other over pancake breakfast um, to just talk about learning because everybody kept saying kids are learning differently now. And people are wondering, well, what do you mean by that? So I said it started in 2007. Do you know what else came out in 2007? Kelsey, you look like you know the I answer. I think it was the iPhone, right? It was the <laughs> iPhone. Right? So yes, this, this piece of equipment that we're probably now like, oh. <laughs> so, But when it came out, it really changed the way that kids engaged with technology and learning. And it expedited the changes in learning. And so that's how I think that's why people kept saying kids are learning differently now. 
Um, and so through, over the years, it's grown from this informal cohort to now um, a thousand, more than a thousand members, more than 500 organizations. And these organizations range from school to schools to libraries to universities to after school maker centers. Um, and they regularly come together in different types of working groups. These working groups could be about computer science. It could be about maker learning. Um, and, and we share ideas. They also provide mini grant funding. Right now they're doing the moonshot grants. Um, but then they also have a robust blog series where they write about work that's happening in this region and highlighting real work, real people doing amazing, innovative projects and sharing across the state, across the nation, across the world. Um, so I highly recommend, you know, I have the Remake Days Twitter handle, but you can also follow at Remake Learning um, to stay up to date. That is good. And um, I know PACT is a member of Remake Learning. I know individuals can also become a member of Remake Learning. Yes, yeah, so you can and be an individual organization. So, I mean, it's a, it's a great organization to belong to, much like PACT, shout out to ourselves. Um, and like I said, we're trying to work more and more with Remake Learning because you guys are a great organization and we appreciate what you're doing. Um, and the Remake Learning Days, I know, like Kelsey, you said you're officially uh, teaming up with them. I know Pittsburgh, in this region, there's a lot going on, we're more unofficial affiliation uh, with what's going on. But is there anything before, um, I know Kelsey has to get back to the, uh, the desserts and camaraderie at, at the, uh, at the awards banquet. Um, anything you want to, you know, talk about that's going on in your region or, you know, that we haven't covered yet? Yeah, I'll actually share. I was thinking about this on the way up. I was like, oh, I don't want to forget. And I almost did. So thanks, Dom, for asking. Uh, your PACT is full of educators. And the one thing that we didn't mention about Remake Learning Days is the opportunity for professional learning. So there are, um, I don't know how many, Yuling, you might know a number, but there's quite a few virtual and in-person professional development for educator events um, on the Remake Learning Day calendar. So I wanted to give a shout out quickly. Um, you know, they can filter for adults and filter for professional development and see what's there on the calendar to engage in and, um, and develop in that way too. You know, I have a lot of numbers in my head, but for some reason that is not one number that I have, but I know there are quite a few um, professional development opportunities. Um, and again, what's fun about that too is um, you can be here and participate in the opportunities here or um, across the nation. There are almost 60 professional development opportunities. I just found the number. So, um, and Dom, I, I just wanted to acknowledge you had mentioned the book, When You Wonder You're Learning, yes. um, the book study, the book study that you're doing, which is awesome. And our theme this year is explore, wonder, and learn together. You know, thinking about a post-pandemic world, it's, it's time to get back to just enjoying learning to celebrate. Um, so there are 1,400 events across the nation. Like I said, more than 375 events here in Pennsylvania. But I will highlight one new series that we just are starting to launch, which is called Wonder With Us. So it is with the two authors of um, When You Wonder You're Learning. And they're doing um, three virtual events in May on Tuesday evening where they're inviting um, these American superstars who are experts in learning and just have interesting career paths. Um, all three of these events are Career Ready PA approved as well. And so on Tuesday, May 10th, they're going to do um, an interview with um, Sylvia Acevedo and Jorge Chong. So Sylvia Acevedo is a rocket scientist um, and the former CEO of Girl Scouts and the author of Path to Stars. And Jorge Chong is one of the co-creators of the PBS kids show, Eleanor Wonders Why. So they're gonna talk about the importance of science skills and how that gets incorporated into their career paths. Um, the second one is on May 17th and it's with Coy Boyles. He's a guitarist, a musician. He plays in the Zach Brown band. Um, and the Wonder With Us event there is about music, making, and more. And he's also written several children's books and, um, and also an album just for kids. That's neat. 
Yeah, and the last one I'll just share is with Casey Robin, and she is an illustrator and designer. It'll be on May 24th. She's done beautiful designs for Nick Jr., Nog, and Walt Disney. Um, just they're, just Google her, look at her Instagram account, and you can't but not help fall in love with her art, and she's going to talk about um, what drew her to that as a career. That's great. The, the book study is phenomenal. Um, it's open to, you know, our members and if you're not a member, you could join for free. You don't have to be a premium member to participate in the book study. That book, um, Greg spoke at Pete and C this February out in Hershey, the state ed tech conference. Uh, PACT is one of the uh, sponsors. And he had a very good presentation, great keynote with um, three superintendents from districts around Western Pennsylvania. And we decided, uh, Dr. Jen Tony, a couple other people, one that I have a book study, so they kind of organized it. We helped back them and do some of the behind the scenes work, but they've been doing the heavy lifting and hosting it and moderating it. But we have Ryan speaking next week as a guest host. But that book should be required reading for um, new teachers, old teachers like me, administrators, because you know, I remember growing up watching Mr. Rogers, that was like you know, must see TV back in the day. Um, you know, being born in the, in the late 60s, uh, mid 60s, actually, but I'll say late 60s. Mm -hmm. Sounds better. Um, but, you know, watching that, and then you see the psychology that he used. And, you know, I, I kind of forgot about, I knew some of the people that were in Pittsburgh, but it talks about, you know, the people that he networked with and the high powered psychologists and child development specialists. That, you know, he was more than just a TV host. He was pretty much a scientist when it came to studying learning and you know it, it's it's phenomenal it should be mandatory reading for all educators um it's a phenomenal book oh, that's really nice of you to say that um and i also enjoy it as a parent like i know a lot of these pittsburgh places i take my kids there but it also references other things that you can just do at home like i love the ask it basket idea where you know, sometimes the question comes up and you may not have time in that moment to answer it. Or in my case, sometimes I just don't know the answer and I need a little time to go research it. And so to be able to put a question like that from a child into a basket and say, this is a very important basket and we are going to come back and answer these questions, right? It, it's meaningful. It's meaningful for both the caregiver and the child. So. And it goes beyond the learning, just the, the humanity and paying attention and, sh you know, showing that you're concerned and care and actually listening. It, ca it covers the whole spectrum of dealing with other people and showing that you're human and, you know, showing humanity towards others. So it's a great book. Um, I'm loving re the reading of it. So looking forward to next week um, with, you know, Ryan co-host. Not that we've had great moderators the whole way through. Um, but that'll be interesting because I've not met him yet. But I did meet Greg, and as I explained uh, before, when we were at uh, – Pete and C, I had my cape on that I got from one of the vendors I was running through because I had to get back to get to lunch and then get back for a session afterwards. So it was, a, it was on a tight time schedule. So, and Greg just kind of like smiled and was like, okay, this guy has a cape on. And he just took it in stride. I was like, okay. I'm sure he loved it. I mean, I, I would, I would smile. I'd see that and be like, superhero just went by. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to thank you guys for. Um, being on anything else you would like to add, anything I may have missed asking um, before we start wrapping things up. I don't know. I just want to say thank you for having us on the show. And I want to thank all the educators who are tuning in for just doing what you do day in and day out for kids. So thank you. Well, we appreciate you guys being on the show. Thank you again. Um, thank you. We're off to be on and I'm glad we could have you. And Yuling, we'd love to have Remake Learning on again. Um, go over some other aspects of what you do for uh, not only Western Pennsylvania, but, you know, internationally now, I guess, with, uh, you know, the Remake Learning Days going and expanding like they have. <laughs> you tell us when. We'll be there. All right. Thank you, guys. Um, we are going to transition into the normal segments of the show. So I am going to say goodbye to these ladies. Thank you again. And we'll be right back.
And we're back. Um, this is normally where we get into the tech notes section of the PACT pod. Eric is not here. I think either A, he's doing a training, or possibly, I'm not going to be one to uh, appreciate it, a good friend, but maybe he didn't have tech notes for tonight, so maybe that's why he left and did not show up, but he's usually pretty good about that. Um, I had a couple different things I was going to go with, and I'm going to go old school. I'm going to stick to my script of old school. Um, PB works. Old school wikis. Um, you know, back in the day before they had online classrooms, I used what was called Wikispaces as uh, an online classroom. That was my platform. I learned it from some of my mentors who were um, early Keystone Technology innovators um, and PAACT members before I understood what Keystone Technology innovator. I think it was Keystone Technology instigators for a while. Um, and before I knew what. Oh, hold on a second. We have to hold the press. Hold the press. Someone, someone's ears were ringing because they heard me talking. Um, hold the press. Welcome back to the show, Mr. Eric Verno. Heard me talking hey, hey, about hey, having can a you tech tip, and he's back. All right. Oh, my headsets aren't working here. Give me one second. Technical Not difficulties problem. popping on the show late. We had two great guests. Talked a lot about remake learning. And oh. now we're on the tech tip. I was just heard you as I was testing them out. It's okay. It's talking about the PB works, old school wikis um, from way back before I even knew what PACT was or knew about Keystone Technology innovators, um, integrators, and instigators all through the various um existence the names have changed uh some past members current members that are still around showed me about wikispaces and i used that as my online classroom platform and i still use it wikispaces went away but i use pb works which is still free um which is why i love it and um i used to support my online classroom because the school district i've used several different platforms over the years i used to kind of run um, renegade and have freedom to do whatever I want from that standpoint. And then we've since invested in a standardized platform, but it limits what I can do. So I, I use a wiki, PB Works, is an easy space for kids to jump in and out of um, working on things. I actually got the idea from a, there was an article in the Pittsburgh Post Gazette, a professor, I don't remember his name, down at uh, Carnegie Mellon University. He would put for his classes, he would put his uh, syllabus up on the screen and or not on the screen i'm watching the screen put it up on, on his uh course room uh, and link it to a wiki and he had the the bare bones syllabus and he told the students this is your workspace fill in the notes as you see fit that will be your study guide he said, i'll monitor to make sure the information is correct but they could have discussions they could put in the notes um, they could work on the background and have the discussions because wikis allow you to have discussions in the background and that's how he ran his study guides for his students. That was kind of a added study bonus for them where kids could fill that in. And I've taken that um, over the years and kind of used it for enrichment points for my classes where students could go in and add information. Um, I would fact check it to make sure it's accurate. And if their information was accurate, they would get enrichment points, but it was also a nice study guide for students. So, you know, sticking with the old school technology, it's still around, it still works. And that was uh, PB Works. Now that's amazing. I saw that in the notes earlier. I apologize for being late, everyone. Okay. And uh, I thought, wow, okay. I bet you that that still works. And wikis are great, man. They they have such a good uh, such a good place and such good uh, um, platform to be able to utilize. Very flexible. So that's neat to hear. All right, I'll roll into my tech note here. I have, of course, I have pulls of Microsoft in, and. Uh, Microsoft uh, formerly had a, a, a site called The Mech, and it was, uh, you would get to it by going to education.microsoft.com. And currently, they are switching it over to Microsoft Learns. And this is a free platform, free website for professional development um, and more focused towards 
Microsoft and its partners. Uh, one of the unique stories is a few years ago, we were, uh, a colleague and I were asked to kind of take over our first robotics club. So I don't know if you have a, any kind of robotics programs in your school, school Dom, but um, Lego has a great program with their first program and their EV3 robots and their Spike robots. And I knew a little bit, but not a lot. And one day I happened to have been scrolling in the mech and I was like, oh my word, there was a whole thing on how to build code and do work with an EV3 robot. To my colleagues, we went through and that was kind of our bare bones training off the bat. And now we're four, I think this is year four or five. Um, the virtual years kind of throw me off a little bit as far as having a robotics program, but they have anything from your Minecraft programs, how to, you know, just get more familiar with it. Um, even to dyslexia awareness. Um, how are you using technology to help those students in your classroom um, that, that are uh, dealing with dyslexia? Creating STEAM learning with micro Minecraft. You could go specifically into eSports. Uh, new stuff's being added all the time. All sorts of modules. You know, it's really, it's really cool. Uh, you That's can hit all your That's Microsoft products and all their partner stuff. Now, do you have to, do you have to be a Microsoft school to access this or can anyone access this? Anyone can access it. And actually, the first time I started using it, I felt guilty because I was using a Gmail account. And uh, <laughs> But yeah, no, I, I use my school account to log in. And yeah, anybody can access it. So you, you don't have to have any affiliation with Microsoft. You can just be going on this site to be able to learn some different things. And uh, what, is, uh, just, what is that web, the URL again? So it's just do a Google search for Microsoft Learns. Uh, but docs, D O C S dot Microsoft, M I C R O S O F T dot com, uh, we'll take you there. Um, so, uh, we'll make sure we put links in the in the notes in the cool. yeah, session notes. All right, thank you very much. That is that is definitely something I'm gonna let because we have a couple new teachers that are running our um STEM, STEM program at school, and so I want to get that information out to them because that's pretty fantastic. It's awesome. Sorry, I'm sorry you missed the, the guess earlier. I was giving you a little, a little bit. I said that's he was looking up that that website for his tech tools. That's why he was late. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. I, no, I double booked myself. Never a good thing. But I was I had it on. I was watching. I was able to see a little bit of the. It looked like it was amazing. It looks like it was great. A lot of yes. good stuff. Um, for yeah, the, the remake for learning the, days, and I'll put those links in in the notes in the descriptions here later this week. Um, Remake Learning Days, I remember when it was just the Pittsburgh thing, and it has grown exponentially, which is fantastic because it's a very noble endeavor. That's awesome. I'll definitely be going back and listening to uh, what our guests had to say and talk about it. So that's really cool. All right, where are we at in the show there, Dom? Um, we're pretty much ready to wrap it up. But how's everything going out your way? Because I haven't had a chance to talk to you in a while. Yeah, no, uh, well, we just missed the Nor'easter. It was about you know 15 to 20 miles west of us, so got all that going on, and you know, uh, we're hitting that time of the year that, you know, every teacher became a teacher so they could proctor state testing, right? Yes. Right? Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, we're rolling into that. <laughs> yeah, we're ready for that, too. I, I have a yeah. lot of sophomores, so I, I get to uh, proctor. And the kids, okay. you know, they do, they do the, oh, this is the worst. I'm like, listen, I said, this is going to sound crazy. At least you're doing something. You're like, what? I go, I get to watch you take the test. <laughs> I said, there you go. I said, you have, I said, you have pressure. You know how I feel about the pressure. I'm not a fan of it. I said, but at least you have something to occupy yourself. I said, mm. I have to watch you take the test. When we were in lockdown, I would do um, social distance activities with Mr. Sal. And one of the things my wife was repainting her hair salon, I did a let's watch paint dry activity. And <laughs> I did it in jest. And I said, theoretically, watching paint dry is more entertaining than watching you guys suffer through True that. standardized tests. Huh. <laughs> uh, so I'll be funny. proctoring at least two of the three tests. Um, uh, I'm hoping to well, dodge know, the third one. But. What I'm hoping for, and I know we haven't talked about this on the PACT level, I'm not sure which region um, is up to bat, but I really hope the PACT goose chase comes out because I know in years past, South Central has done a few of them, um, that they would set up a goose chase for teachers to be able to do like, you know, complete 10 laps around the room, you know, and obviously you can't have a device at the time, Yes. but after, you know, in the afternoon or after school, you'd be able to go through and get your points for doing different things, squats, you know, little different things, uh, you know, just 
you know, calf raises while you're walking around monitoring just yep. to kind of keep it interesting. So put, I hope that the kicks school, in. Uh, the old school step tracker on so you get credit for your point, credit for your yeah. calf, even though yeah, you can't have devices in the room. Yeah. Yeah. Did you go over uh, upcoming events at PACT? No, we haven't gotten to that yet. Oh, okay. I actually have that queued up on my screen if you want me to go ahead and put that on there. Sure. All right. All right. Look at this. You know, April showers, right? That's definitely, definitely good. So on our PACT Glide Show at bit.ly, B I T dot L Y forward slash all caps P A E C T, lowercase events, E V E N T S. All right. So some of these events have come and gone. How was, uh, let's see, the Southwest Meet and Geek? How are the Meet and Geeks going for you this year? Um, we have been on hiatus. It was just tech scheduling was a little hectic. Holidays and everything going on. So I'm hoping to pick those up okay. here in the near future. Well, I hope uh, anybody who's listening or catches this, you know, tomorrow before Saturday morning, uh, April 23rd, uh, one thing I really would love to see PACT be, uh, build up, beef up, is our Keystone Lead and Learn event. Um, we've done it in the in person in the past. This year is going to be virtual. And really, it's an event geared towards pre-service teachers. And that's one of the things that um, I believe our reach really needs to hit uh, is work with a lot of those pre-service teachers and let them know what they don't know, you know, what are the things that they could be learning about for the classroom. So that'll be happening this Saturday from 10 till noon. Um, I'll be keynoting for about 15 minutes to introduce everybody and welcome everybody to it and uh, and kick it off. And we have a lot of awesome, awesome uh, presenters um, that are going to be going through for the day. So you can go to the uh, PACT.org forward slash calendar uh, to be able to see and be able to sign up there. And I think I we should probably oh, go ahead, Don. Uh, right. um, I was at the Get Connected conference. Um, PACT was a co-sponsor out there at St. Vincent College. I was talking with uh, Dr. Aaron Sams, and hmm. he had a lot of his pre-service teachers. I was telling them about this that event and trying to get them involved in PAECT. So hopefully, we'll get some get some traction, get some people from all you know the pre-service teachers from around the state involved in that. That'd be great. And I wasn't able to make the virtual murder mystery totally rad '80s prom gone bad. I don't know. I've heard great things about it. Were you able to attend it, Dom? I had something going on that night. Um, I attended the one in the uh, in the past. I've attended one, and they are fun. Um, oh, they great are social event. Definitely. Let's do a little preview of May, since that's right around the corner. I know it's, um, a, it's that time, man. Will you get to kick it off? Are you holding the May tenth meet and geek? As of now, I do not think so. Okay. So if anybody from the Southwest is listening, email at domsalucci at pact dot org. That you want your meet and geek. All right. Yes. Anybody, I'll All tell right. you what, and I've put that out there. Anybody, if you can't make it to our one of our centralized locations, we will sponsor an event by you <laughs> because I know all the regions are rather spread out and people can't always get there after work. Um, and I know the other regional directors are the same. You know, let us know <laughs> and we will get something going in your area. If we can't make it ourselves, we will still help sponsor it. That's awesome. Looks like Grove City's got a little ropes course going May 14th. That sounds That's fun. That's going to be interesting. Um, talk to people it, you know, about that, some of the uh, the book club, the uh, book group people yeah. are talking about that. And I did sit in on a meeting. Sue Allen, the South Central Regional Directors, um, they're pretty amped up about a Keystone Kids space happening in York, PA. It's actually in a very an old state armory. Um, and they worked on building out this space to be a whole hands-on STEM, STEAM, um, uh, robotics area. So they got a really cool, they, they have a lot of uh, really cool things that go on in the facilities. And they're going to put on a great show for the PACT crew that's going. I believe premium members free, free members. I think there's a $10 fee that they're going to have for it because there is going to be kind of a make and take part um, that is occurring. So. Uh, a tour in STEM activity hosted by the South Central Region. That's May 24th, 6.30 p.m. Hopefully we'll see you there. Nice. Um, I cannot read off your screen, but I know on the notes we have, um, now there's a soft circuit learning, make your own light up T-shirt hosted by Carnegie Library of Homestead. Um, 
That's a remake learning days event. These are some of the oh, okay. remake learning days event events going on. Um, yeah. Bug Builders, May 18th, hosted by Winnie Palmer Nature Reserve. Uh, Winnie Palmer Nature Reserve in search of mini beasts in the garden under logs, Palmer Pond, Great Bug Hotel. Um, May 20th at uh, IU number six, Innovation Playground. It's RIU number six. Showcasing winners of the regional STEM competitions, VEX Robotics, STEM Design Challenge, etc. Statewide PA smart grant projects such as Build Fly Code. Teachers and students who have been utilizing B Boss and Spheros will be there. Um, it's open mic night with regional student musicians. So that's part of Remake Learning Days. There's a lot going on. The one that Yuling talked about was uh, the Art and Science of Hair Color at the Vinci Science Center. Hmm. There's a couple things as we were talking. I don't know if you caught that or not. Um, conversation hmm. I had with a, a lady today at my wife's hair salon. You know, she was talking about you know computers and, and everything, and I said, you know, she was kind of lamenting the hands-on instruction and and how yeah. some kids do better hands-on. I said, well, that's part of STEAM, and yeah. STEM too. It's not just computers; it's the thinking behind it. There's a lot of hands-on and um, across PA. May 20th, Farmer Friday, visit Dairy Farmer William Thiel. Hmm. Thiel or Thiel, I'm not certain. T-H-I-E-L-E. Learn about drones. Um, and that is on the Remake Learning site. So there's that a bunch awesome. of events going on statewide. They're doing a lot of great things. Yeah, the, the specific PACT events being held. So you check out PACT.org. The calendar is at the bottom of the homepage. Um, there's an events page on our website, and as you know, we talked with guests earlier. Remake learning. Go to um, remakelearningdays.org, and there's a whole host of events there. Some are virtual, some are on demand, some are live and in person. Hmm. And I even think PHT has got a couple of remake learning days yes. in our different regions, so check there as well. All right, time to time to thank our sponsors. What do you think? Yes. All right, here we go. Thank you to our sponsors. Yes, thank you guys. Still got to work on that audio a little bit there. <laughs> it's it's better. It's better. Yeah. It's not blasting loud. Yeah. All right. We well, yeah, our sponsors make things happen, so we really truly appreciate them. Yes. All right. Well, we got uh, May upon us, and uh, we'll be looking at kicking things off. Have we talked about what we're going to be talking about in May yet? What are our ideas? What are we kicking around? Anything specific? Um, I have to take a look. I know we were kicking some ideas around. I know Remake Learning's w willing to come back sometime at a later date. Um, we had talked about getting some of the other new PACT board members involved. You had talked mm -hmm. about them. Uh, ISTE's coming up, so that's yeah. another topic that you, we usually cover before. That's probably a good May topic, a little bit of anyone going to ISTE. Yeah. Because uh, June will be too late. That is That is correct. That is correct. And, you know, as, as we're talking and, and kind of spit fire and things to talk about, you could always email us at pod at PACT.org. Uh, give us, you know, hey, maybe we're going to talk about this. I'd love to hear about this. Or maybe you'd like to be on the show. We'd love to have you. You know, it's yes. PACT is a volunteer organization by teachers for teachers. Everybody from the top to the bottom is in education in some way, shape or form. Uh, we have many uh, members that are retired but they still keep in contact with their colleagues and they still 
keep in contact with PACT and, and we're only as strong as our members. And fortunately, Dom, we've got some awesome members. Yes. And, you know, learning is a lifelong endeavor. They always say, and it, it's true. Um, I'm an old dog still learning new tricks. <laughs> we sure, all some pictures, uh, you know, off topic, but earlier today I, I sent some uh, pictures to yeah. Eric, some pictures I found on my phone. I was looking for a few things and both of us a lot less gray in our beards. <laughs> yep. Very much. <laughs> very much. Years so. ago. And, you know, we're still at it, but yeah, the more people that are involved, the better. That's the strength of the organization. Hey, you know, and, and one thing we can say is, Don, we've outlasted uh, the picture that you sent of myself in the Coal Hill. Uh, we that picture outlasted the building. <laughs> that's at the yeah. end of days in. It's no longer yeah. there in State College. Yeah, that's funny. All right. Well, you know, uh, PACT, we truly appreciate all of you who listen, all of you who catch us on the audio podcast or replay it on Facebook. Thank you so much. Uh, for putting up with uh, Dom and I and our antics. <laughs> and um, don't forget, you know, throw a few more things in about PACT. If yeah. you're an Amazon, if you order off Amazon, we have an Amazon Smile account. Check that out. Mm -hmm. um, check out PACT.org. Check your emails because we send out weekly email blasts. We have a weekly newsletter, which has events from PACT and um, the ISTE affiliate in New York, NYSCAPE. So, you know, there's a lot that's being sent out. Please check your mm -hmm. emails for that. And, you know, if yeah. you're not getting those emails, please let your regional director know. Um, I should just direct everything to Josh Bundy, but I'll be nice and <laughs> find your regional director. We're on the website. Reach out to your regional director and we will get that rectified for you. There's a lot of good information that comes out from PACT every week. We try not to spam you guys, but there are yep. there's some good um, professional development opportunities, some good tech tips, and just general mm -hmm. information that goes out. So check yeah. your email for those things. Go to PACT.org for information. We have it there on the calendar. We have an events page. Check that out. It's PACT. We are the voice of EdTech in Pennsylvania and beyond. Change it up take a little care. bit on the phrasing there. That's right. You said what? <laughs> All right. Take care, everyone. See you guys in May. <laughs>